Right before we jump into this video, I want to ask you how do you input, organize, and protect all of the gear that you have? Well, if you're not sure, go ahead and check out my free app called My Gear Vault that you can download right now at mygearvault.com for iOS and Android, as well as get an insurance quote right inside the app. Now let's get into the video. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is a user's guide for the Sony A7 III. Now the idea is to help you understand the buttons on the outside as well as how I would set up the menu on the inside. And it is a complicated menu system that Sony offers. But before we jump into that, let's jump in to the outside of the camera, starting with the on-off switch. Right here, on-off switch, simple. Flick your finger like this, on. Turn it off, flick it off. Now I know some of this stuff is simple. You can skip ahead. We've got links down in the description for different times where we jump around to the different sections of the guide. But maybe if you picked up this camera, you may want a little rundown of what's on the outside of the camera. So there's your on and off switch. I wanna move right to the battery because this is what you're gonna need in order to power on your camera. The battery goes down here on the bottom. This looks to be a blue switch. You pop out the battery, charge it up. I recommend having multiple batteries, especially with these Sonys. The battery has gotten so much better with the Z battery, but it's always good to have backups of everything because if you're on a shoot and a battery goes bad for whatever random reason, it's always good to have a backup. How do you put it in? It only goes in one way. Just move that switch down, pop it in, it clicks. This, you have to actually click this door closed just like that, and now it's locked in. That's simple. Memory cards right here on the side. You have a switch to open the door and you have two slots. The bottom slot is slot one for the SD card and the top slot is a slot for the SD card as well. If you wanted to do redundant shooting, you do have the options there. We'll close that off and move back around to the top. Right here is your mode dial. You've got your manual. You've got your shutter priority, aperture priority. P mode is program, basically full auto, but you have some control over that. Auto is full auto. That means the camera's gonna do everything for you. You've got different scene modes, which most likely you're not gonna be using inside of this camera. You have the S and Q, which stands for slow and quick. Kind of like me when I'm playing sports. No, I'm actually fast and faster. That's, it should be just F and F for fro, faster, me. But anyway, S and Q means if you wanna do your slow motion 120 or you wanna go super fast at one frame a second for shooting your video, you have those options. Moving around the dial, you also have your video mode, though you can shoot video from any one of these dials at the top. You have uh, two and one. Those are user-defined settings, so maybe one of them is set for super slow motion and the other is set for your cinematic video. You can user define and set that. There's lots of custom features on this camera. Just like the C1 button, you can custom set that. And the C2, you can custom set that as well. This is your exposure compensation dial. It's not a dial I personally use, but if you like to use exposure compensation, this is where you would do that. Moving to the top of the camera, this is where you would put a flash or anything you wanna put into the hot shoe, like a microphone, you put that right in here. Then this is your electronic viewfinder, your EVF. This is a very nice EVF, that's how you can see what you're shooting. It's basically putting the display that's on the back of the camera right up to your eye inside of this thing. That's your electronic viewfinder. There's also a proximity sensor here, so as soon as your face goes up to this, it's gonna turn off the screen and allow you to look through the electronic viewfinder. This is your tiltable LCD screen screen. It only tilts out so far, but it tilts all the way up like this. It is a touch screen, though it doesn't do a lot of functions with touch screens, and you'll see that when we get into the menu system. Uh, right here is a diopter. That's if you wear glasses or you want to help see the uh, EVF better. You just go ahead and play with the diopter. That's one thing a lot of people forget about and wonder why their screen or why the viewfinder looks out of focus. You got to make sure you play with the diopter. Right next to that, you've got the red button. That's your record button for shooting video. Right next to that, you have the AF on button. This is also mappable. You'll see that there's a magnifying glass there. That means you can zoom in on your image or with the AF. AEL, you could also zoom out on an image. This is command dial for changing your shutter speed. And to change the aperture, you can turn this command dial right here in the front. 
Next up, we've got the shutter button. I already showed you how to turn it on and off, but this is your shutter button. Press it halfway down to do your autofocus if you have it set to do that. Press it all the way down to go ahead and take the picture. Now let's move to the bottom of the camera real quick. This is your tripod socket. That's where you're gonna screw the plate in for the tripod or monopod or whatever mount that you're doing, and boom, you go ahead and mount that on the tripod. Moving back here, you've got your command dial. This is a joystick or, or a joystick. This is how you can move focusing points, move around the menu system as well. I have another function button, a dial that goes around and around and around, which can be helpful in the menu system. The center button acts as your OK button as well. You've got your play button here, your trash can button. It also says C4 because it's not going to explode if you hit it. It's actually another customizable button that you can do. So the same thing happens with the, the round button. It actually can click up, down, left, right, and everywhere else in between. So you have more controls of the camera right there. Back on to this side, you've got the menu button, self-explanatory, a C3 button, tons of custom buttons as you can see, and moving over onto the side for all of the inputs, we've got right behind door number one, a headphone jack. Under the headphone jack, let me read what that says, that is your HDMI port. Moving on to the next door, it's a mystery because Sony doesn't put any information on the outside. This is your USB 3, so you could also charge the camera as well as shoot tethered. And then this is the old video port that I'm not even sure what they call it. Now behind door number three, there's one thing. That's where your microphone goes. So that's pretty much it for the outside of the camera. Oh, I almost forgot, if you don't know how to put a lens on or take it off, let me just quickly show you. You press this button on the side right here that's gonna release the lens. You turn it towards you, you take it off. Do not touch the inside of the camera. That is your image sensor. It will get dusty. Don't try to clean it any other way than professionally and I hate having it exposed right now because it's exposed to all the elements. So to put the lens back on, you wanna line it up with the white dot on the camera and the white dot of the lens. I'm gonna be doing it backwards here so it's a little more difficult. You line it up right here, turn it away from me, it locks in and you're good to go. So now let's get to the menu system. So now let's go through the menu. Now before we do that, you may be wondering, what is this thing sitting right here? Well, this is an Atomos recorder that I'm plugged into through HDMI that's recording everything internally on the camera. The menu, the live view, and because it turns off the back of the screen, I have to look at this one right here, and that's why it's sitting here right now. Go ahead and hit menu, and we go right into the menu system. Now look at this. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six different things across the top, but on the bottom, there are 38,000 pages that Sony has here. Look, this is a, this is a very in-depth menu system that they have. I do suggest that you use your manual for some of the things that I don't know and that you don't know, so you can go back into the book to find out what they are, because there are so many different options in this camera that you may need to refer to that. First things first, file format. So default coming to JPEG, I personally would go in there and change it to RAW right away. RAW is all of the RAW data that the camera captures going right to your memory card and then you have to process it after the fact, whereas JPEG is a processed baked file as soon as you take the picture. It's also much smaller in terms of file size and a RAW file is gonna be much larger. If you're not sure what you wanna do, I highly suggest you do RAW plus JPEG, especially if this is your first camera, then RAW plus JPEG so you can save those RAW files for the future. I'm going right to RAW. RAW file type, there's compressed and uncompressed. If I'm shooting RAW, I'm shooting uncompressed. I want the best quality file that I can get. JPEG quality, if you're gonna shoot fine or standard, I don't recommend that. Shoot extra fine. If you're shooting JPEG, extra fine is my recommendation. Shoot the highest quality file that you can do. JPEG image size, large, yep, I want 24 megapixels large. Aspect ratio, three to two. Moving on next, you have APS-C or Super 35. This is basically your crop mode. If you wanna get a little extra reach, which I'm not a fan of doing, 
uh, then you would go into this mode. I just say crop later if that's what you're doing for stills, but this is where you can find your Super 35 mode. Moving over by hitting the over arrow on the back of the camera, long exposure noise reduction, I turn this off. I do not want noise reduction on. Uh, that's going to affect your JPEGs, but it will not affect your RAW files that you're taking. Color space, I leave it to sRGB. Lens comp, I don't even touch this, and I just move on to the next mode. Drive mode, you can change to single shot, you can go to high, you can do 10, uh, 10 second timer. Look, most of this stuff is right here on the back of the camera. You can access this stuff at just about any time, uh, but in the, you're not gonna go to the menu to change this. Let, let me show you why. If I hit the function button here, you can see that you have all of these rows of information that you can actually custom set and change the order of. So the great thing about this is you can customize what you want, where you want it, and it's just easily accessible. Sony does a great job with putting everything right at your fingertips and they don't bury it 30 folders deep. Though they actually do bury it 30 folders deep, you can still get to it from the outside of the camera. So back here into the menu system, bracket settings, you have yeah, obviously you could set it on bracket order. I don't even I don't even bother personally with brackets. Moving on, we've got the MR, which is memory one and memory two. That's this dial up here. This is where you would custom set what you want memory one and memory two to be. Select media. This means if you want to select slot one or select slot two, that's where the files would end up going. Not sure why you would do anything other than one. Uh, but that's just me. Moving on to the next one, they must think it's important to have register custom shoot set, which I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, I would suggest opening the manual for this one, but I'm gonna just jump past it over to here. Focus mode, continuous AF. Again, all of this is on the outside of the camera. You can go to AFS for single focus. AFA is basically autofocus auto. It's gonna select the best between autofocus single and autofocus continuous. You have autofocus continuous. This DMF one shows you a lot of different red marks for doing manual focusing. And then you've got manual focus right here as well. So generally, I'm between AFS and AFC when I'm doing my shooting. Uh, we've got priority set AFS, a uh, balanced emphasis. I leave most of these settings where they are because they do a good job, but you can go in here and have it change to AF, meaning it will not shoot in AF single if it's not in focus. You could set it to release, which would even shoot a picture if it's not in focus. I just think balanced emphasis has, has been good for me. I haven't run into any problems with that. Same thing with AF continuous. Focus area, that's where you can change the focus area. Again, look, all of this is accessible on the back of your camera. That's your zone AF, that's your center AF, your flexible spot uh, manual, and then your expanded flexible spot. I spend a lot of time in flexible spot manual when I'm shooting, no matter what I'm shooting. Next is focus settings. I don't touch that either. Uh, switch, that's what SWT means. I've come to find out, kind of weird. Uh, vertical, horizontal AF area. I leave this off as well. Look, this is complicated. For some reason, Sony has made their menu system super complicated. It doesn't have to be this complicated. I don't know why they bury things where they bury them, but that's why we're going through this to try and work through this together to give you a better starting point. AF Illuminator, there is an LED right here on the front of the camera that lights up orange. That's gonna help you in low light situations get the focus. It's also gonna annoy or bring attention to yourself when you're out there shooting. So I actually turn this off. I don't leave it on auto. Center lock on AF, I leave that off. Set pr face priority in AF, meaning right now face priority in AF is on. It's gonna put a box around your face. Neither Steven and I, my film guy back here, can figure out what face detect frame display does because even when we turn it on or off, it's still putting a box around people's faces. We'll have to put a call into Sony to figure out what that one actually does, and I bet you they have no clue either. Uh, AF track sensitivity. Ah, that's what sense stands for. Again, good job, Sony. AF track sense. Uh, three is standard. This basically means how it will track the subject or if it loses a subject, will it continue to track it and how long will it do so? This is one of those things I leave on standard as well. We've got autofocus with shutter is on, meaning if I hold my finger halfway down on the button, it's gonna lock in 
and find the focus and it's doing that. The other option is you can turn it off if you're doing back button focus. Moving on to seven of 14, there's a lot of stuff on this page and I changed nothing about it. Refer back to your manual if you are not sure what any of this stuff means, all right? We're skipping ahead to the next one. AF micro adjustments. This is if you need to make micro adjustments for your lenses. If you feel that they're back focusing, uh, you would come into this menu, which is 814. Then moving on into 914, this is where you get into your exposure compensation, though you could just change this on the top of the camera because you have a dedicated dial to go ahead and do that. Okay, you could reset the, the, the compensation right there. This is where you could access ISO if you ever needed to dive back into your menu. But remember, you've got custom function buttons to activate changing your ISO right from the back of the camera. It's much easier to do it there. Metering mode, same thing. You can change all of the different metering modes that you have. You've got multi-metering, you've got center, you've got uh, sport, uh, spot standard, then we've got entire screen average, and highlights. I generally leave it on multi because that's gonna give me the best results that I'm looking for. If you ever need to get into spot, you would jump into the different metering modes. Again, you can access this stuff on the outside of the camera. Next up, we've got face priority in multimeter. Good job for shortening that, Sony. Uh, pretty sure that what this means is that if you're in a metering mode where you give face priority, it's going to go ahead and meter for the face. Okay, way to complicate that with uh, very well thought out words. Next up is exposure two under 10-14, spot metering point center, same thing, you could change all this from the outside. Exposure steps, three, uh, one third of a stop is what I personally use. AE lock with shutter, go ahead and leave this on auto. Exposure standard adjust, I don't even know what that is. This function adjust, thank you for giving us information. This function adjusts the standard of optimum exposure. Generally, adjustment is not, could it get any more confusing? That is terrible, I'm hitting cancel. I don't even wanna think about that section of the menu. That is so weird. All right, moving on, 1114, flash mode. So anything you're doing with the flash, if you're putting an external flash on, because this doesn't have a flash built in, you would come into this menu setting. Next up, we've got color, white balance, imaging processing. This is 12-14. White balance is set to auto. You have a bunch of different options that you could do right here. As you see me scrolling through, and you can actually see it changing. Incandescent, warm, white, white, this. A fish, that's if you're going underwater. Do not put this camera underwater. But if you had a housing for it, you could do that. There's a lot of, wow, there's so many custom setting options. Auto white balance is generally pretty good. And when you're shooting raw, you can change the white balance after the fact. Priority set in white balance, standards where I go ahead and leave this. Um, DRO auto HDR, dynamic range options. I go ahead and leave this on off. That's correct, Steven? Yeah, we do off because I don't want it to do any of that high dynamic range auto HDR when I'm shooting. I wanna shoot my raw files and just get them the way that they're shot. Moving on, we've got creative styles, standard. This is your picture styles. You can see it changing on the screen right now. You're gonna go ahead and set this dependent upon what situation you're in. This only affects your JPEGs, so keep that in mind. Your raw files will not be affected when you do this. All right, wow, so many different options. That is a lot of options. Back to the top, back into the menu sec section, we've got picture profile. I go ahead and leave that off as well. Focus assist, focus magnification. This is if you need help focusing. You could punch in right here and it will give you no limit. You could constantly zoom in. Initial focus magnification is set to 5.9 times. That means you're gonna jump straight in. That's gonna help if you need to get really tight manual focus you can go ahead and lock in right there. Next up is AF in focus magnification. That's on, meaning you can still autofocus when in that zoomed in all the way. Uh, manual focus assist, meaning it will give you manual focusing assist on the screen when you're zoomed all the way in. Next up, you've got peaking settings. This is where it's gonna show you red lines around what you're trying to focus on. So you can go in there and custom set that for your desire. Moving on, face detecting shoot assist, anti-flicker shoot, 
that is off, but if you do want to worry about your shooting and flickering lights, this is something that may be good to put on. If you're in a gymnasium and they have those old metal halide or sodium vapor lights that do a lot of flickering, this will help you not get flickers in your shots. It will shoot between the flicker. It only shoots on the flacker. Face registration is say you have one face that you always want to recognize and make sure that that face is in focus. The camera can do that. That's pretty good. I wonder how it does with twins. Register face priority, that is currently on, and we are done with the 14 menus right there. That's a lot of stuff. I know it's a lot of stuff, but that's how Sony does it. I wanted to jump in here real quick and say before we get to the next section, if you would like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com 11 days. Now let's get back to the video. So that was just picture menu one. Now we're going into picture menu two, which there's only nine different menus for. Good job, Sony, thank you. File format, this is where you're gonna select the file format that you would like to shoot in. You've got these options, 4K is where we wanna be, so that's where we go for 4K. Record settings, all of this again is accessible from the outside of the camera. You can change it to 24P at 60 megabits, at 100 megabits, then 30p and 30p. Uh, we generally stay at 24p at 100. That's gonna give us the best quality file that we're looking for. This is where you've got your slow and quick settings. You can go in here and, go, and set your frame rate from 120 frames a second all the way down to the one frame a second. So that's where you're gonna go. We like to set a lot of custom settings to one and two on the outside so that we can quickly get to the settings we're looking for to go from slow to fast or just to regular shooting. Now the Nikons and the Canons, not as easy to do that if they even offer you those options at all. Uh, proxy recording, we currently have that off, but you could record to two cards. You could have the regular file format to one and proxies going to the other. Moving on to two of nine, we've got AF drive speed. This is something I leave on normal as well. AF track sensitivity, standard. If you're more sensitive, you can obviously change that to responsive, but I leave that set to standard as well. Auto slow shutter, thank you for shortening that word again. On audio recording, this is if you wanna record audio for your video, I leave that on as well. Audio level display, that's on. You like to see your audio display on the back of the screen so you can make sure you're not peaking. Moving on to number three of nine, this stuff I just leave the way that it is. We don't really tweak it, so we'll skip to number four of nine. Silent shooting is currently off. I'm not sure why they hide silent shooting in menu four, nine of the camera mode number two, but if you want to shoot silent on this camera because you don't want to use the uh, mechanical shutter, this is where you go to turn that on or off. Uh, electronic front curtain shutter, I leave that on on. Release without lenses, I'm not sure why this is enabled. I want that disabled. Why would you want to take a picture if there's no lens on it? Release without card, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off too. I don't want to take pictures unless I have a card in the camera. Steady shot is on. This is where, it, basically any lens that you put on the front of this camera that's autofocus, you're now gonna have your steady shot on. Uh, so I leave that on. Steady shot settings, we can go in here and see that you can adjust it a couple of different ways. Right now it's set to auto, so that's gonna auto detect based off of the lens that you put on. And if you have a manual lens that you're trying to put on the front of this, you're gonna go ahead into manual right there. Back to the menu, let's go to number five of nine. Well, there's no options for me to select, so let's move on to six of nine. Display button, you can have it set where if you hit the display button, I'm pretty sure that the monitor comes on or you could have it with the finder coming on. So I'm gonna go ahead back to the menu. Uh, zebra settings, this is where you would go if you wanna use your zebra settings to help you with exposure when you're photographing or videoing outside. You'll see that the clouds or the sky may get those zebra lines. It helps you make sure that your exposure is closer than further away. Grid lines, rule of third grids. Now this means that if you wanna put that basically checkerboard inside of your viewfinder you go ahead and turn rule of third grid on you can do square grid diagonal plus square aren't you happy I know what diag means yeah diagonal or off 
I personally leave this off, but I know a lot of people like having their rule of third up there on the screen. I leave exposure set guide to off and live view display setting effects on. Uh, I leave that on because whatever effects you have set, your picture styles, your exposures, you're going to see it live when you look through the viewfinder or on the back of the screen. Moving on to seven of nine, you've got continuous shoot length. Now, this is going to show you when your buffer is about to fill up. So it's nice that you can see that happening. It's basically telling you, hey, you're shooting too many photos. If you keep shooting, the buffer is going to be filled. So you want to just watch that. You have that displayed there. Auto review. I absolutely turn this off. That means that when you take a picture, the picture stays up for five seconds. I don't want that. I want it to, I don't want it ever to come on until I hit the review button on the back of the camera. So there's that. Now we're in eight of nine. This is an important screen because Sony gives you so many customizable buttons and functions and you can basically map everything you want. So we've got custom keys for photos. You could go in here, you can see where that button is and you can make all of the changes that you'd like to make under custom key for video, custom key for reviewing your images and then the function menu setup. Check this out. It's the function uppers and the function downers. This is when I go ahead and hit function on the back of the camera. You can set all of these things and move them around. So lots of customizability, really quick and easy to get to the settings that you want right from the function menu without having to go back into the menu of the camera. Dial setup, I leave this. I want the aperture to be changed with the front dial and I want the shutter to be changed with the back dial. That's what TV stands for. Uh, and then AV TV rotate, I also leave on normal. Moving on, dial EV compensation, leave that off. Movie button means it's all, when you hit the movie button on the back, the red button, it's going to hit record uh, no matter what. You don't have to be in the movie mode on the top of the camera. Next up, we've got lock operation parts. It's currently set to off. This will lock this command dial back here. And audio signals, we just leave this on on as well. Moving on, we've got network one as well as network two. This is where you're gonna set up your Bluetooth or your Wi-Fi settings. And then we've got the playback one. I don't really change anything in playback. I just leave this the way that it is. It's usually set perfectly fine, uh, but I don't make a lot of changes there. Suitcase, this is in case you're going away on vacation, you need to take a suitcase with you. There's seven whole more folders into this area. Gamma display assist, off, volume settings, I've got that set, that's all dependent upon where you want your volume, it's pretty self-explanatory right there. Uh, delete confirmation, that's if you're gonna delete a photo, it's gonna tell you, do you are you sure you wanna delete this? And you're gonna go ahead and do that. Moving on to 2-7, we've got display quality. We actually turn this down to standard because I think it's gonna give you a better quality image in your electronic viewfinder. High is a higher refresh rate, so I'd rather get a better quality than a higher refresh rate. Uh, power save, start time, five minutes is fine. Auto power off, temperature, ooh, that's if it gets really hot. We have it set to high, that means it's going to get much hotter before it decides to auto turn off. Honestly, haven't run into any issues with that. You've got your cleaning mode, touch operations, though you can't do very much with touch operations in this camera, other than zooming in on images, we leave those on. Moving on, touch panel, uh, touch panel pad. This is where you can control the moving of your finger on the back of the screen. So we definitely have that on. Touch pad settings, this is where you can change the operation area. I like to have it on the lower right myself. That's just so that I can control my focusing points for stills as well as video. But again, it's personal preference. Try them out and see which one works best for you. Next up in 4.7, this controls all the ports on the side of your camera. I don't go into here very often, but now you know where it's at. Moving on, this is obviously where you set your time and date, area settings, copyright info. I like to put my information into the camera so that it's stored in all of my files. You've got format, that's where you would format the card. File number is series. What options do you have? Series or reset? Reset means that if you take 10 pictures, pop the card out, put another card in, it's going to reset back 0, 1, 2, 3 through 10. I like doing series. Set file name, it's set to DCS or sorry, DSC, you could change that to something like FRO or whatever initials that you want. Sometimes I do JP1 so that when the camera repeats uh, after 10,000 images, I make it JP2. 
two. Moving on, six of seven, record media settings. So this is where you could say, I want raw files to save to both cards. I like that. Or you could say raw to one, JPEG to the other, or you could do backup video. I like redundancy. So I put two cards in the camera, shoot raw to both of them. I don't do, if you're gonna shoot raw plus JPEG, I don't recommend doing raw to one, JPEG to the other. That makes no sense. Put them all on the same card. Now it may make sense if you're shooting and you need to hand off the JPEGs to somebody else, but what's gonna happen if that raw file, uh, raw card goes bad and you just have the JPEGs? So I like to shoot to both. Next, you've got all of the, the folders inside. Really nothing I'm gonna get into right here. You've got the version and setting reset. That's to reset everything. And the other is just the FCC type of stuff that they need to put in there. And finally, we have come to my menu settings. This is where you put anything you wanna quickly get to, like the electronic shutter thing that is buried all the way in video menu number two, because there's no dedicated button for that. And, and if you don't have a dedicated button for something, you throw it into here so you can quickly get to it under my menu, because Sony's menu systems basically bury everything in places that make no sense. So that's the menu systems. Now let's move on to the next section. I wanted to jump in here real quick and say if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can do so. Just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Now back to the video. So now let's move into live view for both photos and video. Now, because you have an electronic viewfinder, you're basically seeing live view all the time. And you can access your video from any live view section. So you can do your stills, and then by hitting the record button, you are gonna start your video. But I wanna go around the screen to show you what you can see. So starting here on the top left, you have manual. So whatever setting you're in, you will see that displayed right there. Right below there is how many frames a second you're going to do. It's currently on single frames. Now remember, on the back of the camera, you have the ability to make changes dependent upon where you have your custom function buttons. Right out of the box, you can see the multi-frame option right here on the side of the back of the dial left. If I go ahead and hit that, it's gonna give me the option to dial through and make these changes. So you can quickly make changes right while you're looking through the viewfinder, which is awesome to have. Now, one thing I don't like is that you can't touch this. The din, 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 greatest song ever. You can't touch the screen to make this stuff happen, so you just have to scroll over to it, and then you hit the OK button, and it brings it back. So now you can see that it's in continuous high for how many frames I'm going to shoot. Below that, you have AFC, which is AF continuous. You could also change that with buttons on the back of the camera. You've got how many focus points are going to be active. You've got your AF on for locking on to the face. You've got your picture profile, I believe, which is currently off. So down at the bottom, you see it says 1 60th of a second, and I'm gonna change that with the back command dial. I go to the right to get a faster shutter speed, turn to the left to get a slower shutter speed, then over to the right of that where you see f4.0, because that's what this lens has, I'm gonna use the command dial in the front to go ahead and change that right there. You've got your exposure compensation to the right of that. Your ISO is currently blinking on auto. Uh, the other picture style thing is off. It's not picture style, it's the picture effects, the things that you probably shouldn't be using. You've got your standard, you've got your dynamic range optimizer. That's something that I leave off as well. Auto white balance and your metering mode. And around the top, you have your battery indicator, raw format, showing what raw format in we're in, aspect ratio, and how many shots you have left. Then you have the hand that is waving at you, which is letting you know that your stabilization is on. Now, if you look at the back of the camera right here, you see display, D-I, what's it say? D-I-S-P. If you hit up, you can see that your display is changing. So if you don't want all of these distractions on your screen when you're shooting, right in your EVF, you can go ahead and turn that off by changing the display just by hitting up. Also on the back of the camera, you've got that function button, which brings up all the different function options uh, from drive mode to AFC, AF continuous. These are things that you can quickly make changes to. And it's really nice that all of this stuff is right at your fingertips. And now I wanna go into image review, which is hitting the play button on the back of the camera. And that's your playback for your images. 
That's gonna show up in your viewfinder, EVF, as well as on the display if you remove your eye from the electronic viewfinder. Now you can zoom in by double tapping. I can't do that right now because I'm going out to the Atomos right here, but that is one of the only touch features you have is you can end up double tapping, then pinching and zooming, and then moving around the image. You could zoom in on these images, you could delete the images, you could use the scroll dial to go from one image to the next, you can play back videos, but that's basically it, guys. You've got a live viewfinder for everything else, so what you see is what you're gonna get. So I hope that this user's guide has helped you out in some fashion, and if it has, please leave a comment down below, hit that thumbs up button, and also give me a subscribe right here on YouTube so that you can see all of the videos when they come out. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. To check out the best of the best videos that we've created here at Frono's Photo, go ahead and click on the screen right now. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you can get all of the videos when they come out. And don't forget, there's a little bell icon. So when I put out a video, you can get a notification. Hit that bell, ring that bell.